Marvelous hello, friends and loved ones. How are you today? Let me ask you all something. Have you ever stopped to think about your legacy? What would you say is your crowning achievement? Have you always been considered a king among men or a royal pain in the rear? Has life thrown you for a loop or have you been carefully saving for a rainy day? If it's not already obvious by all these puns and king talk, I am finally taking a look at King's Quest, the complete collection. For those of you that weren't following the channel way back when, King's Quest, or more specifically, Chapter 1 of King's Quest, ended up being my game of the year for 2015. This reboot of the classic point-and-click adventure series was developed by The Odd Gentleman and published by a recently rebooted Sierra Entertainment. It told the story of Graham before he became a knight, and the trials he went through against other hopefuls in tests of strength, speed, and wits. I ended up loving the first chapter so much that it's still one of the only times in over five years of making content that I ended up doing a dedicated video on a brand new title, something I'm sure I won't be doing again anytime soon. The chapters are presented as stories being recounted by an elderly King Graham to his granddaughter Gwendolyn, and Graham's actions in the story will help shape the type of person that Gwendolyn will become as well. It was a pretty fun adventure game with gorgeous environments, witty dialogue that was very well performed by an all-star cast, and fun puzzles that, yeah, mainly lead you to the same outcomes, but the fact that some of them could be done out of order often made me feel like my choices actually had an impact, at least on a level better than what Telltale usually does. The squirrels remember that? <laughs> the squirrels will most certainly remember that. Now, if anyone is curious why I'm playing the PS4 version, it's because I actually fully completed the Steam version years ago, and I don't know, I just thought this would be a fun, fresh way to experience the title again. The main hook of King's Quest 2015, as well as one of the main reasons to replay it, is that you shaped how Graham turned out by guiding him down a path of bravery, wisdom, or compassion. I decided for this video to go down the path that I'd say I best fall into. Bravery is out, since I was scared of Rugrat's search for Reptar when I was a kid, and we all know I don't have wisdom because I only realized a few weeks ago why the hot golfer lady from Pokemon Sun and Moon used flying types. So that basically leaves us with compassion, which works well enough because it turns out that's how most of you seem to see me anyways. Also, I'd just like to say I really appreciate the 6% of you that think I'm smart. In the first chapter of King's Quest, aside from competing in the Night Hopeful Tournament, Graham undertakes many other quests, like befriending the townsfolk, with each of them representing one of the three alignments. In my case, I grew closest to Wente the Baker, but I definitely do love the entire cast. My personal favorite are probably the Hobblepots associated with Wisdom. Zounds! Did you just read my fortune? No, we're just very old and very judgmental people. It's true, we're judges. This is my judging face! Wait, didn't I use that clip in the last video? Between solving a bridge troll strike, fighting off some goblins, and befriending an archer named Achaka, whose unfortunate death is a driving force for Graham as a character, there is a lot of meat on this game's bones. Chapter 1 is just a perfectly solid adventure game, and replaying it for this video reminded me that I do still love it. But I already did an entire video on the first chapter, outdated as it may be so we're going to be focusing primarily on the rest of the collection. I'll just bring you all up to speed by spoiling that Graham won the tournament against his friend-turned-rival Manny, and after the events of King's Quest 1, that's actual King's Quest 1, not King's Quest Chapter 1, we are basically ready for the start of Chapter 2. Now, back in 2015, I avoided spoilers because this was a brand new game, but for this video, I am going to have spoilers for each chapter throughout the video. Though I am going to leave a lot of the really big stuff out in case any of you do want to play the game for yourselves. Also, before we get started, real quick, if you like what I'm doing, please consider subscribing. You'd be amazed how many of my views come from people who aren't subscribed and how much clicking that button really does help the channel. Thank you. At the start of Chapter 2, Graham has become king, but he doesn't really feel like he's up for the job as he struggles to make important decisions. This is going to be important. After getting overwhelmed, he heads into the town square, only to find it eerily quiet, and he is soon captured and imprisoned by the goblins we encountered in Chapter 1. So the main focus of this chapter is trying to escape from Goblin Jail. Because, as we all know... It's so bad in Goblin Jail! Fortunately, the goblins are pretty lax about letting Graham walk around and do whatever he needs to do. 
There are a couple of items that are considered contraband that will get taken away if you attempt to go to bed with them, but you'll also be able to unlock places to hide this stuff, or just outright use it before it becomes an issue. Now on the surface, the idea of collecting items and solving puzzles to break out of Goblin Jail sounds interesting enough, however there is one extra facet of this chapter that makes it special, but also provides a stronger challenge. It's not just Graham in prison, but Amaya the blacksmith, the Hobblepots, Wenty the baker and his wife Bramble, and of course the majestic unicorn Mr. Fancy Cakes. They're also rotting away in jail, and unlike you, aren't given chores that allow them to walk around outside their cells. You'll have to not only solve puzzles, but keep the town citizens healthy, as each day their stamina depletes. Every day Graham is given a chicken leg to feed to this giant mole rat, but you can also bring it to one of the town citizens or just eat it for yourself, as Graham must also keep his strength up in order to access certain areas of the prison. It's all constructed well enough that you can never actually fail this chapter, but it does force the player to be a lot more careful about what they decide to do each day. And one unfortunate reality is, you can't save everybody. Literally. Both Bramble and Mr. Fancy Cakes are sick, but there's only one bottle of medicine in the entire prison. So no matter how skillful you may be, you are forced to make tough choices. The main puzzles in Chapter 2 are all fun enough, mostly built around the Goblin's obsession with fairy tales, which kind of makes it feel like classic King's Quest again, as you'll solve problems based on stuff like the Princess and the Pea, or the Sword and the Stone. Wait, didn't Hamtaro already do this? Look, I'll confess, the first time I played through this chapter, I screwed up. A lot. And I was so unsatisfied with my performance that I ended up replaying the entire chapter that same night. It is a little bit shorter than the first one, but the main draw of this chapter is definitely in the resource management decision making side of things. Story-wise, there is a little bit more to this chapter as well, like Graham helping to free this human who was supposedly raised by goblins, and learning that this entire plot was orchestrated by Manny, who wrote his own fairy tale to rile up the goblins. The main takeaway of this all is Graham learning to become a leader, and make those important decisions as best he can. It's not a bad chapter, but it's definitely not one of my favorites either. Chapter 3, though, is great. It opens with this pretty clever little time travel puzzle where you have to save a baby Cedric from being eaten by a badger. And yes, folks, you do have to. Or else you get killed by... A poison a snake! Heh. <laughs> well, actually, snakes are... V snakes are venomous. Yeah. That. <clears throat> Moving on. But once you're past that, Chapter 3 is a tale all about romance. We all know the story of how King Graham met Princess Valenice and fell in love, right? Well, apparently it was a little bit more complicated than that. Because Chapter 3 is the dating sim waifu chapter. Graham journeys to the top of a tall tower to rescue a princess, but surprise, encounters two princesses, V and Nice, of Eastern and Western Kalima, respectively. And for the first time in this playthrough, I will not be following the compassion side of things. A big part of compassion is acting with your heart, and the heart wants what it wants. And my heart definitely wants to date the snarky tough girl with short black hair who makes puns instead of manic pixie dream girl Makoto Nijima. Always seek adventure! Also, so yeah, I'll be dating V. But what about all of you? Are you Team V or Team Nice? Let me know in the comments below, and if you're really cool, let me know if you're Team Young Bramble, because... Holy crap. Now, Chapter 3 is definitely the most linear plot we've seen so far. You're not really going to be exploring a vast area, and a lot of the inventory puzzles you solve are going to be pretty straightforward. Like, here's a book, and here's a book-shaped hole. The main draw of this one is that many of the puzzles will help you win favor with either V or Nice, depending on how you solve them, eventually determining which of the two you'll end up with. While I'd argue Chapter 2 was a better adventure game, I think the plot and characters of Chapter 3 help carry it a lot more, and make it a more fun experience. I honestly really love the idea of having a dating sim explored in other genres. Usually it's just like visual novels, or RPGs with social elements in them. 
but a point-and-click adventure dating sim felt a bit more unique and was pretty enjoyable. This is also where the game starts to really connect itself to classic King's Quest in a way I was not expecting. And the first time I played this chapter, I actually found myself having to step away from my computer and just take a moment to be like, wait, is he? Wait, is that? Oh my god, so Manny is... Oh man, no way. No way! Like, you know, that kind of thing. The game suddenly starts packing itself with these fun little references. Like, one of my all-time favorites is the reveal that the tailor from King's Quest V is actually the son of Wente and Bramble. It's mostly meaningless, but still neat. Chapter 3 ends with the reveal of an elder Valenice, and naturally she's whichever of the two girls you ended up with. Today is her birthday, and if you won enough favor with the girl you dated throughout the chapter, Gwendolyn is able to give her the perfect birthday present. It's a really sweet final scene, and a good way to end this part of the saga. Chapter 3 is probably my second or third favorite after the first chapter, and is just an enjoyable little love story. Chapter 4 is... not that good. I'm sorry, but it, it's not. It starts out pretty strong, with Graham and Valenice having started their family together, and the small series of puzzles about taking care of your newborn babies was pretty cute, with Graham's lullaby to Alexander being a particularly touching scene. We'll make lots of puns, no puzzles undone, I'll love you forever, my son. But those familiar with King's Quest lore know how this has to go. Manny, now revealing himself as longtime villain of the franchise, Mananen, kidnaps Alexander after giving him the slave name Gwydion. Which kinda raises the question, did Alexander intentionally name his daughter reminiscent of his slave name? Then, 18 years later, after the events of King's Quest III, Alexander returns, and to celebrate, the family takes a vacation to beautiful Tanalor, with the weather being... unseasonably cold for this time of year. The family gets separated after the machinations of a meddling sphinx, leaving Graham and Alexander to solve puzzles and make their way through. Chapter 4 is basically a linear series of puzzle rooms, and that's it. Some involve sliding blocks around, some have you activate switches in a particular order, but really most of them just involve moving blocks. If you're a fan of this type of puzzle, it's probably fine, but it wasn't my cup of tea for what's supposed to be more of an adventure game. Alexander even tries to play the whole thing off as one big joke, so they knew exactly what they were doing here. I wasn't expecting this adventure to be so linear. Aren't we supposed to collect a bunch of crazy items and then use them on random objects? Just because you address it doesn't make it less annoying. There are a few puzzles I liked towards the end where you have to answer riddles using inventory items, and this sort of mini escape room at the very end was pretty cool, and a nice way to incorporate every member of the family, including, oh my god, Rosella, with the final solution being a really good callback to King's Quest VI, but overall, yeah, I definitely feel like Chapter 4 is the weakest link in the collection. There are some story highlights here, but the gameplay definitely drags it down in my eyes. I know Chapter 3 was also incredibly linear, but like I said, I think that one carried itself a bit better thanks to the characters and story that it had. Also, I'm really not a big fan of how they handled Alexander as a character. I get he's supposed to be this rebellious teen that hasn't quite bonded with his father yet and still has a lot of growing to do, but did they have to give him lines like, Ugh, I wish I had my mini canvas. I could have painted so many great selfie portraits in here. And, Yes, I was checking my messenger pigeons, but I'm paying attention. I believe this is what the kids refer to as... cringe? I still recommend finishing Chapter 4, because if you're this far into the game, you may as well see it all the way through. But I wouldn't blame anyone in the slightest for just pulling up a guide and taking Alexander's advice of just blasting through these puzzles as quickly as possible. And that brings us to Chapter 5, where we play as elderly Christopher Lloyd Graham a short time before the present-day events of him recounting the stories to Gwendolyn. Much like Chapter 1, you'll spend a lot of this chapter running around Daventry, collecting items and solving puzzles, and overall, it definitely feels closest to the first story in terms of gameplay. But there is something special in this chapter that made it one of the most interesting experiences I've ever had with a point-and-click adventure. 
Elderly Graham is having trouble recounting all the details of his life, and so Chapter 5 is an incredibly surreal and peculiar affair with weird logic that somehow works. You explore literal gaps in Graham's memory. There's one moment when your controls are inverted. You solve puzzles that he'd forgotten to mention in previous tales, and some of the inventory puzzles specifically require getting an item from one memory and combining it with a completely different recollection. Also, remember when Graham was young and became a skateboarding legend? That's okay, neither does Activision. There's one fun little scene where you play these segments that are reminiscent of the classic King's Quest games, which I think are basically mandatory in a reboot like this, because the new Leisure Suit Larry titles did this too. The main goal of this chapter is to get Graham to his final showdown with Manny, which presents itself as a series of mental challenges ranging from Picross to deductive reasoning. It's a fairly interesting take on a boss fight for a game like this, especially when tackling a character like Mananen, and overall, I think it worked pretty well. At the very end of Chapter 5, you briefly take control of Gwendolyn as she explores the castle halls, viewing the tapestries highlighting the choices you made for Graham throughout every episode. The ending is really strong, and wraps up all five adventures in a way that felt fulfilling, but also left me kind of sad to see it end. And lastly, we do have a short little epilogue chapter where we play as Gwendolyn, and it's fine. It's only about half an hour, and was clearly meant to set up a potential Season 2 of the series, following the franchise formula of having other members of King Graham's family in the lead. It's the type of adventure a kid would have out in the woods, and we're even introduced to Achaka's granddaughter, who already struck me as a pretty fun little character. I'd argue the epilogue does undercut the weight of the main ending, but is still well worth exploring. Overall, how does the rest of King's Quest stand up when compared to that first chapter I gave my Game of the Year title to back in 2015? Replaying it for this video, I still believe the first chapter would have worked just fine as a standalone title rather than the first episode in a bigger saga. But frankly, I don't think I can say that about any of the others, and not just because they rely so heavily on previous adventures. All of the other chapters feel a little bit more confined, with less variety in gameplay and a tighter focus on one specific idea. Chapter 2 was all about that resource management and decision making, Chapter 3 was basically a dating sim, Chapter 4 was more about literal puzzles, and Chapter 5 was that surreal experience that makes no sense at all without everything else backing it up. At the end of most of the chapters, you get this nice mural that highlights the choices you've made and the steps you've taken throughout your journey, and I couldn't help but notice that the actual choices you make really start to dwindle in later chapters. Like, Chapter 1 showed us what eye you entered in the tournament, if you were able to complete character side quests, how you defeated the dragon, even what nickname the trolls gave you are all seen here. But by the time you get to Chapter 4, these aren't even decisions I made in Chapter 4, they just felt like the predetermined outcomes I was going to see by the time I got to that chapter in the first place. Basically, I don't think any other chapter is as strong as the first one, but I do think that combined, they make up an overall solid package with a couple of highs and lows, and the entire arc tells a great story that is a good send-off to the adventures of King Graham, one of the most legendary characters in PC gaming history. Unfortunately, that epilogue does seem to be the end for King's Quest until the next reboot. Sierra attempted to make a comeback in the mid-2010s, but outside of King's Quest, all we really ever saw from them was stuff like Shiftlings and Velocity 2X, which may have been perfectly fine titles, but they just weren't enough to rebuild the legacy this company was once known for. As eager as I would be to play through a new series of adventures focusing on Gwendolyn as she forges her own path, it just doesn't seem likely. However, what we got in the complete collection here is still a series of well-told stories that is definitely worth seeing through to the end. Wait a minute, is that what I think it is? End. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video. If you liked it, be sure to click like, but if you really liked it, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Extra special thanks to all my friends and loved ones over on Patreon, which you can pledge to today to see your own name in these ending credits. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, take care.